opportunity to speak on behalf of all my brothers that have had the opportunity to serve with Joe here at Seventh Group. This speech is a collective effort amongst all the men that know the best. I am extremely honored for this opportunity, although it is bittersweet. Today we are recognizing Joe for his service to our country and our regiment. The bitter half of my emotions is that I have to see this warrior hang up his kit and transition to civilian life far earlier than he ever anticipated. The sweet piece of this is that we are actually getting the opportunity to honor Joe for his service and sacrifice with him sitting here today and not under the less desirable circumstances. It is no question that God has a plan for Joe simply observed by his presence here. I cannot tell you how blessed we are to have him here and in the shape he is in that. I want to start out by talking briefly about the day that is really the reason we're here. In July 2014, Joe suffered a gunshot wound to the head on a mission similar to many others that we had ran in Afghanistan. That day that Joe was injured was different though. This is only my assessment, but due to the fact that there was a major Taliban offensive a short time after the fight that Joe was injured in, uh, where the Taliban had attempted to overtake a northern border district that was north of us, I believe that several hundred Taliban that were a part of that effort were staged in that village that day that Joe received his injury. Unbeknownst to the ODA, that day was not typical of the other missions that we had run there. Rather than the sporadic effect of fire that we had seen in the past, guys on that mission experienced several hours under a barrage of effective Taliban gunfire. Some guys recount their own experiences. Staff Sergeant Wade Curtis recalled Brown smacking off the inside of his chicken plate of 50 cal as he returned fire on fortified enemy positions. The guys were out getting trucks unstuck, fighting from the vehicles, and fighting from the ground, returning fire with every weapon system available, <coughs> dropping one 60 millimeter, excuse me, 60 millimeter words over the enemy that far exceeded anything we had seen up until this point. Sergeant First Class Mike Amato was in the hatch next to Joe on their vehicle. He remembers a flurry of bullets all around him when Joe advised they best get down. In that moment, Joe was hit. I drew a short straw that day and had to pull off the guard and all the boys were out. I was glued to the radio once I had heard the captain call troops in contact. After a while, the call came up uh, and someone had been hit. And Sergeant First Class Cicero and I clung to the end of the radio waiting for the code to say who the soldier was. It was Joe. Chris immediately went and grabbed his Bible and we read Psalms 91, which said, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place for safety. He is my God. I trust him. For he will rescue you from the trap and protect you from the deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near you, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever he goes, and they will hold their hands to your feet, so that your, they, even your foot will not get hurt against a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras, and you will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who have loved me, I will protect those who trust in my name, and when they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them salvation. We prayed that God would keep Joe alive and that he would protect the rest of our men in the fight. We sat and listened as Joe's Bible dropped minute by minute, wondering where med the medevac was. Our medics, our first class Mike Amato and Sergeant First Class Al David, had to sit on Joe for an extremely long time due to the complications of the medevac getting there. By the time the bird landed and got Joe, it had almost been an hour since he had sustained his injuries. We got a call from Kandahar shortly after Joe was 
we arrived there. His wounds were so severe that they flew the battalion commander's bird out to pick the team up as soon as they arrived back from the mission because they were certain that Joe would not make it. We awarded him his Purple Heart that day, and we spent the night with him until the next day we put him on a C-17 bound for his next level of care. It was hard to say goodbye, but deep down we all knew that Joe was going to make it. He was not going to quit the fight that he was in. I recount this to say three things. To give you a semblance of an idea of how serious things were that day, to give you a baseline of what Joe's actually accomplished to this point, and to tell you that God honored his promise in Psalm 91. I want to start at the beginning. ODA 7232 in 2011 was a new team. Joe had been there a couple months when I was arrived, and to be honest, I didn't know what to think of him. His personality was unique, his sense of humor was wildly funny, his hair was crazy, and his chin defined. <laughs> but quickly I learned that he was a meticulous Special Forces Engineer Sergeant. From property to explosives, he really owned being a Charlie, and he never had, we never had a doubt of his ability to be a Special Forces operator. If you knew Sergeant Major Dave Hayes back then, then you know what kind of sadistic PT he was used to doing. And it never ceased to amaze me how Joe was able to work around those, those exercises with ease. I don't think any of us from 3-2 or that era of 3-2 will ever forget Wiggy Wednesdays. I think mostly Joe's ease of those workouts were his dedication to the gym working out sometimes up to three times a day, which he often called going to the gym yondo. <laughs> Besides working out, he was one of, on the verge of success with demo. If there was downtime he, while deployed, he would conduct rehearsals and conduct tests of explosives and their effectiveness, and this was always done in what Joe called the feed lab, which had no location. It was always impromptu, but always safe. While deployed, he would never be without an Afghan scarf, his wild hair and beard, and that fit the beat lab because he had a mad scientist look. <laughs> Even back home in civilian clothes, Joe's hair was always standing up on end. In 2012, we literally lived in a rock pile on the side of the mountain for several weeks as we worked towards achieving the company's goals for that deployment. Even when housed in a clump of rocks, he never failed it never felt that Joe would have a hot cup of some kind of top-notch coffee brewing, regardless of what part of the world we were in. He rubbed off on me in that way when we attended Mountain Warfare School together, because we, he shared a cup, of coffee, a cup of his finest coffee with me every morning during the duration of that course. I now only first press, and I prefer to drink a cold dark roast if I have the choice. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your love of coffee with me. On that mountain, we carved out a fire base in the back of a ridge with a bobcat, but Joe called it a peacat. Besides shortening almost any possible word that you can think of, he had several token phrases organic to a sense of humor. He only called any work to be done to Bobo, regardless of what language he was speaking. <laughs> We have all been amazed at your rotary recovery 
and you are an inspiration to everyone that's witnessed your progress over the last few years. Joe, I am and we are all proud of you and how far you've come in your recovery. Your resolve to recover, to understand and accept your situation, and your deep drive to push to new levels of healing. Your accomplishments inspire all of us who know what you have gone through and how far you really have come. And although this chapter of your life is over, you are and will always be a Green Beret. If you notice at the beginning of the speech, I said hang up your kit. I did not say hang up your beret or your cap. Those will always be a part of you. You will always be a part of the men that you served with. We will never forget you. We will always remember for the warrior that you were. I love you, bro. Dale Presley Bear.